Good morning, church, and welcome to Resurrection Lutheran Church Alive and Online. Welcome to all those who have joined us from near and far. We are honored that you have invited us into your home and into your lives. We come to you from our sanctuary here on Plank Road in Fredericksburg, Virginia. Let us know that you are here either through the Facebook chat or the comment box if you are viewing through Google Link. You can put your prayer request in the comment section that runs on the right of our live stream. Today, the Sunday closest to Veterans Day, we honor, remember, and give thanks for those who have served, especially during war times. This is a day to remind ourselves to perpetuate peace through goodwill and mutual understanding in our neighborhoods, our country, and among nations of the world. This is a day of prayers for people of all faiths, or no faith at all, so that the days of peace on earth increase and the days of war decrease. A day to lay down our arms and to sing with our ancestors, lay down our sword and shield down by the riverside and study war no more. Outside on the hill, we have placed 40 flags each representing a name that people in our community have given and will be included in our prayers today. Resurrection is a faith community reflecting the love of Christ through reaching and loving and caring. No matter where you live, there are several ways to be a part of our community and to participate in God's reaching, loving, and caring mission with us. Immediately following today's worship, the adult forum, Here I Stand, resumes with study of another social statement by the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, of which we are a part. We begin our study of economic life, sufficient, sustainable livelihood for all. Join the MICA study group led by Pastor Ken Martin Thursdays at 7 p.m. via Zoom. And this group welcomes all regardless of gender or age. The group is currently studying White Fragility by Robin DiAngelo. And each week, study questions are sent to those who have signed up. Links to these activities and more can be found in the events section of the Resurrection Lutheran Facebook page, which you can access even if you don't have a Facebook account. The altar flowers today are given to the glory of God and in memory of Gloria Malillo, whose memorial service was held here yesterday. Today, we, bring, we begin a three-week worship series entitled there is now with the shout at midnight are we prepared to hear the shout at midnight the voice of one calling not to take us away to another realm but to live fully in this one the shout at midnight is recognition that god is at work among us where do we see god how do we experience god as we go about our daily lives let our songs speak to the nearness of Christ, the comforting yet challenging presence that inspires us to keep our lamps burning with the oil of kindness and service in Jesus' name. Leading us in worship today are Allie Beck, Alex Johnson, and Chuck and Ann Price. And we welcome Greg Williamson, who has joined our group as a vocalist and instrumentalist. <clears throat> In the booth, we have Dave Evers, Robert Schull, and Jeff Slunt. And I'm Heidi Moore, pastor here at Resurrection Lutheran Church. So wherever you are, join us as we prepare our hearts and minds for the worship of the one true God and sing with us the call to worship. This is the day that the Lord has made. <clears throat> you can find the words on the screen or in the bulletin. And again, welcome. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. We will rejoice. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved. Amen. Amen. Holy One, we confess, we confess that, that we are, are not awake, awake for you. you. We, we are, are not faithful in using your gifts. gifts. We, we forget, forget the least of our siblings. siblings. We, we do, do not, not see your beautiful image in, in one, one another. another. We, we are infected, infected by, by sin that divides your, your beloved community. community. Open, Open our, our hearts, hearts to your coming. coming. Open, Open our, our eyes to see you in our neighbor. neighbor. Open, Open our, our hands to serve your, your creation. creation. Amen. Amen. Beloved, we are God's children, and Jesus, our beloved, opens the door to us. Through Jesus, we are forgiven. By Jesus, we are welcome, and in Jesus, we are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promises prepared for us from the foundation of the world. Amen. Amen. Today's piece is brought to us by the Reverend Bob Humphrey, Bishop of the Virginia Senate. I yearn for the time when I can once again say to all of you in person, the peace of Christ be with you. And then to hear you respond in person and also with you. How about you? Are you yearning for that time? I'm sure you are. And I'm absolutely confident that time will come. And in the meantime, I'm very grateful for the technology that allows us to still meet and learn and serve together in this time of pandemic. So, the peace of Christ be with you. Thank you. of the Lord be with you and also with, with you. you. Join us with our opening hymn, Lo, He Comes with Clouds Descending. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and also, also with you. you. Join us for our hymn of praise.
Let us pray. <clears throat> o God of justice and love, you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give, Give us, us the light we need, need and, and awaken us, us to the needs of others. others. Through, through Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, our, our Savior, Savior and Lord. Lord. Amen. Join us for singing and reading of Scripture. from Amos, the fifth chapter. Alas for you who desire the day of the Lord. Why do you want the day of the Lord? It is darkness, not light. As if someone fled from a lion and was met by a bear, or went into a house and rested a hand against a wall and was bitten by a snake. Is not the day of the Lord's darkness, not light and gloom with no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your festivals. I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. And the offerings of well-being of your fatted animals, I will not look upon. Take away from me the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the melody of your harps. But let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us welcome the gospel in song. Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 25th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, you, O Lord. Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, The kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. And as the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. 
Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. So I have a candle here. And when I light the candle, of course, it gives off light, right? And if there was somebody who was standing right beside me, they would see the light as well. They could benefit from that. Now, every time we have a baptism, we light this really big candle here. And when the baby is being, or the adult is being uh, welcomed into the congregation, one of our leaders from the congregation will take a light from that candle and light the candle and hand it to the sponsor if the, if the person is a baby or hand it, hands it to the person who has been baptized and says, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works in heaven and glorify God. See, that is a reminder for us that we are to be light we are to be light to the world. And with that light, we are to share our light, the light of Christ with everyone around us so that they may know and love Christ and worship his name. Amen. The Shout at Midnight. <clears throat> Uh, first of all, I do want to give a shout out, all puns intended, to the U uh, United Methodist Church Discipleship Ministries, one of our mission partners for the background material for this uh, sermon, which I have liberally used. Now, there is a spiritual based on this passage in Matthew 25. Keep your lamps trimmed and burning, keep your lamps Trimmed and burning, keep your lamps trimmed and burning. See what the Lord has done. The earliest recording that we have of this song is the early 20th century blues singer, Blind Willie Johnson. YouTube, a recording of him singing it. You can get a feel for the slave experience where it was used as a work song, but also for something, also for hope, for something much better. And this song has been described as a flame around which an oppressed community gathers to keep their spirits warm and to have a sense of place in the dark and scary world of pain and suffering. Just like the light that we lit during our children's sermon, that we are to have encouraging words for others. Now, it was a simple song sung by workers able to keep their minds on their tasks and yet be transported to another reality, another kingdom. Like many, I learned this song in high school as a choral piece. And if you know this song, you may have sung the last line a bit differently. Now, I like Johnson's version because it reminds me to see what the Lord has done to be on the lookout for God sightings and God winks, to keep awake to what God has done, is doing, and will do in my life and the life of others. Now, there's another one, person, another person who sings this song as well, the Reverend Gary Davis, also known as Blind Gary Davis, who was a blues singer that recorded primarily in the mid-20th century and changed the last line to, for the world's, almost done. 
Again, in our passage, Matthew 25, 13, alludes to just that. When the world's almost done. For no one knows the day or the hour when Christ will return. Now, being the preacher that he was, he reminded his listeners of the promised return of Christ and that it is on the horizon and that what we see and experience in this world is not the end. Rather, we can lean into the hope and the promise of another world, of a better world. The scars of this world do not define us, and the mistakes that we have made do not have to keep us chained. And on that blessed day, our tears will end and life eternal, as promised in our baptism, will become our present reality. But here's an interesting thing. The oldest manuscripts of this song that was sung in the fields have, for the work is almost done, as the last line. For the work is almost done. Your work, my work, our work. The work is almost done as we look toward the new day, the new horizon of Christ's coming, even though we don't know the day or the hours of Christ's full-on return, and yet not losing sight that Christ is here, but not yet. One of those Lutheran paradoxes. And then we read this most uncomfortable parable of the ten virgins, wise and foolish, who are attending a wedding. And I'm going, wait, what's the message here? Is it that you have to have your act together? And if you don't, you're going to enjoy the weeping and gnashing of teeth of being thrown out in the outer darkness and being locked out? Now, if a parable is a story that is not necessarily true, but reveals truth about God, Jesus, and the kingdom, or us, then what are we to gather from this parable? Well, first, let us remind ourselves of when it was written. During a dark and scary time filled with abuse from the Roman Empire in the wake of the Jewish uprising and destruction of the temple around 70 A.D. And yes, they were looking for the second coming of Christ then. And here's another interesting thing about this parable. Unlike other times, Jesus is talking just to the disciples. And he's talking to them after he's spent two days sparring in the temple with the authorities and is now sitting on the Mount of Olives overlooking Jerusalem. Betrayal was just hours away, and the shadow of the cross loomed. And Jesus is preparing them for the night that is to come, the shout at midnight that will begin his final trek toward the cross, toward death, and toward resurrection. But still, exclusion because you didn't have your act together? Where's the grace? Where's the mercy? Where's the love? Those who don't share are called wise. And there's some sorting out to do here. Back in the beginning of Matthew, in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus says that we are the light of the world and that we are to let our light so shine before others. Let them see our light and give glory to God in heaven. And yes, as I said, we use this line in our baptismal rite as described during the children's time. But could it be that the lamp in this parable is so much more than a simple source of light? Rather, it's a life of service and sacrifice a life that is transformed by grace through faith in Jesus, a way of life that reaches and loves and cares for the neighbor, whoever they may be, even if they don't think or look or act like we do. And could the light also be acts of love or words of encouragement that we share with each other, those tasks which God has called us to do? The calling of Christ to love God, love neighbor, and make disciples. God has imbued each and every one of us with gifts, unique to each and every one of us, 
and designed to share. St. Paul writes in Philippians, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. In other words, how do we respond to God's love in service to the other? And for each of us, that answer is different. But this parable, well, let's think of those virgins as maidens, young, unmarried, who have been invi invited to the party and are waiting for the fun to begin, but it just doesn't because the bridegroom is late. Really late. Wise, foolish, it doesn't matter with these maidens. Their behavior is questionable. Every last one of them can't stay awake. They all fall asleep while they left their lamps burning. Now that they are awakened by the long-awaited bridegroom, all of them find that their lamps have gone out. And this precious oil, the source of the light, it's gone in the lamps and it must be refilled. And so in the dead of night, some have the oil and some don't. What makes the first five wise is that they get to go to the party because they weren't ungenerous and wouldn't share. And the other five, they didn't bring any oil. They got locked out because they had no reserves. They, could get, they couldn't get some in a timely manner, and they were not prepared for the long wait. A long wait. Do we not live in a time when waiting patiently is difficult at best, and yet we wait. We wait all the time. We wait at stoplights. And here in Fredericksburg, I've learned the ones to avoid because it takes too long, like two minutes. And in traffic, I use Google Maps to find the best route so I don't have to sit in traffic, but sometimes even the sitting is quicker than the shortcut. We wait at doctor's office. We wait for Halloween. We wait for the big day. We wait for the wedding. We wait for births. We wait for the perfect house. We wait for the diagnosis. We wait for the teenage driver to arrive safely. We wait about the news about whether or not the early acceptance application has been, in fact, accept accepted. Did I get this call? Is that the place, Lord, to hear if a loved one survived or not? For the good stuff the bad stuff. Wait, wait, wait. It's hard to wait, but waiting alone is even harder. Many of those, many people in our congregation have faced that waiting alone because they were not allowed to go into the hospital as their loved one went into surgery or was recovering from illness. Waiting alone is hard. Could that be the truth that we need to hear? Forget the judgment. Forget the shame. Just be there for one another so that no one is left out in the cold. That all are prepared when the shout at midnight comes. Learn from the five foolish women that we do not need to make sure that we have oil, a source of light, from remembering our baptism to hearing the word to gathering around the table for nourishment. We all have that. And learn from the five wise but ungenerous women to not force people out, that no one deserves to feel shame, and that in our community no one is locked out, and that all truly means all. And what would have changed if these women had said from the beginning, did you think to bring some extra oil? Go get some now rather than wait. In other words, help others to be filled with the goodness of Jesus. And here's another interesting thought as we unpack this parable. There was no relationship between these women. They weren't looking out for each other, and they certainly were not a community. And perhaps that's it. Be a community. Be a community that rejoices together, that cries together, that welcomes together, that invites together, and, to, and assures that no one has to wait alone. 
Be a community that lives in relationship, not only with the living Lord, but with each other. Waiting is a reality of life, then as well as now. And as we reach and love and care, we can do so that the experience of waiting is one that is done in community and fellowship and grace and mercy. Even if we're on the telephone with someone while they're waiting for their loved ones to come out of surgery. As a community, we are stronger. As a community, we are blessed to be able to be on the streets of Fredericksburg from the 10-year-old in our community to the 70-something-year-old handing meals to people in our community who find themselves homeless and food insecure. Yes, our work is almost done, but not yet. Lutheran paradox again. We respond to God's love, and we respond to God's light by reaching and loving and caring. We participate by using the grace given to us, the free gifts that we have received. And we listen for the shout at midnight, recognizing that Christ is among us in the people that we serve. So let us keep our lamps trimmed and burning. See what the Lord has done. Amen.
Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all who are in need. Holy God, rouse us to deep praise as we gather for worship. Enliven our worship with sincere and heartfelt song. Sustain the work of all church musicians and artists who lead us in praise and prayer. Hear us, O oh God, your, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. Holy Creator, surprise and delight us with the beauty of the world you have made. Bless the work of landscapers, architects, and artists whose lives invite us into the harmonious living with your creation. Hear us, O oh God, your, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. Holy Judge, let justice roll down like waters over this world. Reign over the courtrooms of every land and the hearts of those who guard the law and those who stand accused of crimes. Be present in cases where we long for both justice and mercy to prevail. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. Holy Companion, Console those who feel lonely or abandoned. Share the hours of those who live and eat alone. Comfort those who have few friends or who struggle with their identity and place in this world. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy, mercy is great. great. Holy Protector, be with all observing Veterans Day. Guard the lives of active duty and retired military personnel. Comfort all who mourn those who have died in the line of duty. Heal the wounds, both physical and mental, experienced by service members. This day we especially remember Joseph Slunt, Marlon Wright, William Irish, Claire Burr, Wayne Louderback, Leah Louderback, William Taylor, Christopher Kepner, Earl William Davis, Harry Alfred Clausen, Dan Pumphrey, Gerald Price, Day Chandler, A.T. Pumphrey, Paul Johnson, Lee Johnson, Jim Crookshank, Mark Frizzle, Rex Johnson, Joe Slunt, Robert Miller, Albert Evans, William Evans Jr., William D. Evans, Kenneth A. Fenema, Hadaya Ahmed, John Kabuchi, Melvin Hater, Jacob Morisak, Jack Morisak, Richard Kovic, Lee Kino, Robert Stevens, Paul McIntyre, Steve Redlin, and Greg Williamson. Be with those who also care for and support our veterans in their healing. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy and immortal one, we pray in thanksgiving for the lives of all who died. Remind us of the frailty and shortness of our own lives and inspire us to use them for the building up of your kingdom. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We ask prayers of healing for those Angela Jones, John Dutton, and the family of Gunny Todd. Be with all of those who are elected this year. Guide them with your mercy and your power and your trust. Lord, in your mercy, hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you again for worshiping with us this day. Uh, I have some great news to report from our mission. Uh, this, I received this from Gail Taylor, who leads up our Meals to Motel. And she says, we have a great delivery. 
We had a great delivery. We met up with the team from Life Point Church, which is down Route 3 here, which had Sunday breakfast to hand out. And they went along with our team to every stop. And Jeff and Kelly went to Route 17 Motels, and Gina Terry's family went to Relax Inn and Super Value Inn, and Gail herself went to her camp park with folks from Life Point. As Micah is able to house more friends, those without homes will mainly stay at the Red Roof Inn during the winter. Now our meals to there will increase. The cold weather shelter will not be open because of the virus and that it could rampantly run there. This is a wonderful ministry and this is one of the wonderful stories that came from yesterday. Jeremiah is a man who always came for dinner when we served in the basement of the Presbyterian Church. He says very little and just stares ahead. Currently, he does not get a meal at a motel or the park. I heard from someone that he spends his days sitting on the bench across from the visitor center, and a team sometimes stops to give him a meal. This evening was the first time I caught him there, gave him a meal, and told him that I remember him from our lasagna dinners. And he smiled. If you're downtown and happen to see Jeremiah on his bench, be sure to say hi. Because of you, this ministry can go on. Because of your gifts and your prayers and your wonderful support, we can do this. Many more meals are coming up, and we need your support as well. May God be given the glory. Amen. Tis of the sweet land of liberty, of the I sing, land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrims' pride, from every mountain side, let free. Thank you. 
gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as our Savior taught. Our Father, Father who, who art, art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed, hallowed be thy heaven. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Join us in our celebration song, I Stand Amazed. May the God of all creation, in whose image we are made, who calls us, claims us, and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for service, give you reason to rejoice and be glad. And the blessing of God, sovereign, Savior, and Spirit be with us always and today. Amen. Amen. mission today. Just a few reminders that after today's worship at 1130, the adult forum Here I Stand resumes their study of the EL e ELCA social statements. MICA groups, uh, the MICA study group meets on Thursday, and of course the Zoom links to all of these events are in the 
are, are in the events section of our Facebook page. And next Sunday is Holy Hops, our theology pub at 7 p.m. We'll see you here next Sunday. Beloved of God, go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. To God. Thank you.